Oh, okay, Penn here vlog, the next to last one ever. Oh boy, okay, um, first segment is 13 Big Problems, written by Jared Bush. Go, Bicky, and go, Bicky, they go back to the world in which they are mocked, and, um, um, one of them, giving birth to a bunch of monster, again, spoiler, again, not the female, <laughs> um, you know, birth to a bunch of baby monsters, and they have to wrangle up the baby monsters before they put it into monster human being forever, and of course, within one, the end of beast. Um, meanwhile, Boone had not been doing so well in terms of his performance kind of a part-time live man person. Working, which Phil kept mentioning on the report card and apparent kind of point in him. So, Boom wants to try to be better and not be kind of screw up. So, I really don't have a lot to say about this one. It's pretty simple in a good way. It's pretty good. There's not a lot. It, with sequel element, I feel like we've done way too many of them again. But, we got to go find the original world. But, the sequel got good and this is one of the better little sequels. Um, we. We get to see more of what we've seen before, but we get to see more of the monster stuff. And yeah, for the whole running gag, we're going to two instances of go monster. And Boone get to give birth in the couple code. They don't worry, they can't catch no reproduction, so, um. It's, yeah. Creepy, but immunity. Um. The most interesting part is the boom. We get some development of him. Not, it's not even that deep, I would say, but good that we got some that. You know, actually worked. You know, back him trying to prove worth, and basically, you know, Seth Rackham can be a pen sometimes for a, you know, looking down on him. By the way, Coffee is but, but she gives him good jokes, I mean. But, Smokey Boone show, he, he gets the spotlight, and he's a good protagonist, I feel like. He's one of the better appearances. And parents, I believe I guess my post to that, the thing I did think of, I want more inflation of being parent and, you know, fed them paying him. Non hero bear, but the kind of food, while we get more of them, they are not gone that deep into it. We just know how they feel about Boone. Um, they are also both voiced by the guy with the Boone, whose name gave me Adam something divine. I mean, I don't know what it was, too. Um, and it's pretty obvious. It's not one of those cases where I go all down, you can't tell. He can tell. They do a good job, but it's, it's funny, but weird. Um, speaking of funny, not, I can't tell you, but the ones I do are funny. Uh, but some good stuff with Rippin' and Larry. Apparently, Larry was the person he inside got married to a man pregnant, <laughs> and that was pretty funny. He was a big smoke to pee Rippin' Larry. <laughs> Being a Chicago weird part, where he got Larry and died, but oh, he didn't, which is a totally pointless part, but kind of a nice part, too. Yeah. Um, my favorite part would be some of the joke with man pregnant, to, with my Ray Banford. He was really great. Um, and of course, the part with Boone actually got man's game of the day. That was awesome. Um, otherwise, not a whole lot to like game or analyze. They can come up, go with fun monster stuff, and Boone getting some more development back in a sort of typical way, but the way I've liked Ski, and you know, it's pretty simple. It's like, you know, the only blame I have is that, yeah, Boone's going to be relatively thick and a little shady, but I think that's a good way where it's not too big a deal. Yeah, but Larry definitely is weird. I want to give a pretty solid episode. You can call a good episode. Sometimes an episode just good. Not a lot to say. I feel like due to Boone development, it could have been better. But I feel like for what we got, it's pretty good. That we really love to have for the episode. Nice to see Jared Bush actually do something. He's one of the creators. I guess Sam Veen kind of called Chuck. He seems to do a little more. Jared Bush. Jared Bush is actually he uh, he called Topia. Go. So, he got to doing better things. Um, yeah, they go. But he did it more. I, I know he could do it, but, but, so, cool. Good. But, yeah, and I think he got to read, write the cup of code. And yeah, actually, you in the comment, which I'm looking forward to so much. Okay, now for Mr. Rippin, written by Kenny Murley and Ty, Ty Man Kayla. Hopefully, I've watched them again. It's fine. Can you that? Okay, so in this episode, we basically go with Bourbon Birthday, and it seems pretty scared with the fact that he's not a great villain, especially can he take a point in power. Can we get after we get a bit of a backstory? Basically, Rippin finds out about the whole free truck thing and want to go and become the end up back in power world where 
basically it turned out, basically we're going to buy a clever thing at the end. Go turning out that whole oh, Charlie got actually there, and they find out that Charlie never really wants to take it, so Pan can't find the parent. So, anyway, so, this is pretty good, although, it was almost just point guy, but only because I heard thought it would just give you that story. At least that, um, we can't believe we're talking about the other two, I thought, from when we talking about the whole thing would be that story. I guess I should have pulled my ass the whole thing. Well, one thing, I think I will turn 42 minutes. We get tweeted around all about Penn's backstory and shit, so why not one all about Ribbon? In fact, Ribbon and I just got up for the finale, I feel like. That would probably be Tom couldn't get there, it's fine. Um, you know, it was pretty good, but I didn't bring really good like I thought it would be, because it is a little, I think what Bob might have got because a little scattered. It's got a little, it's like, well, well, I'll start, most of that thing works. What? There, it can rip it up, of course, we get, you know, Rippin' and Larry being, and Larry's really not cute, he's got a good, he's actually around night too, Rippin', you know, being a friend, you know, and actually wishing him his birthday, especially at the end, you know, and actually doing what Rippin' asked of him, you know, point it's really cool. Um, you know, definitely a lot of, you know, nice little jokes, you know, you know, yeah, um, the, yeah, Penn, you know, getting back to have a really cool, that meal is so cool. First time we go back to a world from the land game, which not a proper sequel to a company game two. Of course, if game three happened, then we get from that, but it won't happen. Um, you know, and we'll call thing event. I can't remember who voicing the mom, but dad voiced by the creator of Breaking Bad. Of all the people they could get, then <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I think I liked to the, um, yeah, um, but the couple of guys, well, it went in time, if you think. The backstory itself is cool. Pretty cliche. You know, his parents will, you know, they're very little, but of course, they will like belittle him and it's going to get through his goals for a competition, and he is, of course, that guy last match. And they can as well, and you do feel by for him, but it is like a typical kind of backstory you would expect for something like Rippin. Um, I do like the fact that apparently Phil considered getting Kanga gone. <laughs> There's Rippin, but he went for Rippin, who had a black thing back, unpronounceable. Steve's more unpronounceable than that for him. That's a good joke, of course. But, um, either way. But, anyway, the thing would go to that. Oh, the thing. At one point, when Rippin find out about the sharp thing, they have the whole sequence where he, like, you know, where he, like, Go back home, Doug Winkler, trying to look at your form as a mole. Blah, 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 but it turned out that he doesn't be even stuck with it. But, um, but it turned out the whole thing just imagine fine. It goes on, not for a long time, but it's a couple, three minutes. And it ultimately kind of like, I mean, it talk of, I'm actually really confused on the thing, event like, it get like, cause he find, he and finding out things about the most dangerous form of Agile, which they can find he didn't know of, even though he trapped him in there. That's what I don't get. Yeah, the sharp thing I'm saying, how he doesn't know that. But how he doesn't know. But, it, it, but then we have Big Poop being in a magic bot. How much of that a flashback of him came learning about the most dangerous form of Agile, but how it's, I'm really confused on how, like, the wall would think how he know. It's really confusing, because, like, imagine Bob, because of it, had him finding out certain things, or he, like, assuming, like, it's kind of confusing, but, um, he take a deconstruct of the episode, because there's not a whole lot of time left, I think, to happen, you know? I feel like the couple would be better off being all about ripping backstory, you know, maybe the whole thing, and then you can have a little, like, thing, thing you know? But, you know, it's gonna work pretty well. You know, both of the individual parts definitely work well. Some good jokes, like dramatic moments we find out ripping, and it got a nice little ending. And yes, they do get that shard pretty easily. And it's gonna rip in. Definitely, definitely more of it into the, yeah, do evil stuff. So, and it's a nice little setup for the finale. Um, but, but yeah, I do think that's good. It's not that a lot going on, it's just that. And having the back story, but glad for stuff with, well, you know, Rippin and Vision of Agent I think that really would 
you could just have him going, oh, I'm to do the real thing with her or whatever. And that's it, you know. Yeah, I couldn't help but find this one a little disappointing because I was seeing guys were going to be I heard it was going to be a little, that was going, going to that story. And I did get more play I wanted, but I will admit that story was a good thing I did that. Yeah, it got a little bit. I really, I think that's why it could get go on for enough time to where not much time left in the episode for much to happen. This really should have been a 22 minute episode. Kind of, it didn't have one. So, break the main point back story for the second half. Do a lot of this stuff. Now, I get a get a pretty good episode, but not a really good one like I was expecting. Half a really good part to it, though. So, but still, it's a pretty good episode. Uh, but uh, in between the two, I can't yeah, like it. Well, it's about, it's about, that part could be better than for Team Big Palm. But at the same time, that one will be more complete. So, but still, it is a pretty good episode. Um, and I definitely got enjoyment out of it. I just didn't like that bunch of guys thought I would. I will get into patient or the fall of the legitimate fog. I had a little too much going on, and that, that part doesn't go on long enough to where you're like, wait, wait, that's just going to magic go on? Wait. I was confusing, you know? Some will be editing or something. It kind of did too, I don't but I, it's not on Confucius. Um, so, <laughs> but, yeah. Got very 14 bit problem, and it's dripping. I talked about it going on the roll. Both pretty good. One was pretty consistent, we call it because the other one is inconsistent because of some stuff I don't really get. And it's a little disappointing. But for what it is, it's pretty good. Go, and tomorrow. The big finale at the end of the world. The one hour finale thing. Wow. Definitely got it. So I guess I'll still see you then. And then, uh, tomorrow's gonna be a big day in general. Because I'm also gonna be seeing the emoji move. I'm sure it's gonna be fantastic. So I shall see you all tomorrow for all that stuff. That would cool that pending gear of y'all. Hopefully a bang. See ya.